champion's mindset first within yourself in order to go into a locker room with others, your other teammates, your coaches. And once you get that champion's mindset, you're able to evaporate that off into everybody else. To Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And today, uh, re really excited to bring to you. Uh, I'm, 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 really, I'm really excited about this interview, actually, because I was, I was doing a little research. Uh, I was doing a little bit of research, just like I told you. And we're, we're going to get to our guests just in one moment. Uh, but really want to make sure that everybody understands the focus and the purpose of the Beyond the Ball podcast. The goal is to ultimately serve and support student athletes and to position them with information, with tools, with strategies, skills, and success uh, so that ultimately when the ball stops bouncing, that they will be prepared for that next phase of life. And that's specifically uh, why I wanted to bring on this guest uh, today. And, 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 and our guest today, she's, she's the first African-American female staff member in the history of Illinois football program the first full-time female hire. She is the director of high school relations, none other than Coach A. Coach A, how are we doing today? How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm doing well. Was, was there anything I missed? Because sometimes, you know, I get a little excited and I might miss some details. There, is there anything I left out? Uh, no, I think you hit it right on the bar. I liked it. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, if, 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 if you're the coach, and then you said you liked it, then we're not going to do it again. Sounds like a plan. So, so coach, just, uh, wow. So we, we got connected by, by way of the M MCAA. Uh, and, and, and I was, like I was telling you, I was, I was doing a little bit of research. But, but for those people out there who, who, might not be, uh, who might not be as familiar with you as I am just yet, do you mind just sharing a, a little snapshot uh, just, you know, to, to bring those, the rest of those individuals into the fold and so we're all on the same page? So I think, like I said, you hit around the bar. Uh, currently director of high school relations at the University of Illinois. So under Coach Lovey Smith as head, uh, you know, our head coach. But yeah, that look, yeah, I think you hit it right on. That's pretty much the deal now. Um, also, since you brought up MCAA or NCAA, I'm a board member of the founders of MCAA. So I'm glad you came on and enjoyed that and learned a lot because I think it was a good two days. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Def definitely, definitely for, for everybody out there listening, I'm going to go ahead and put, put in the shameless plug. The, the, the MCAA, they're doing some amazing things uh, because it, it was what, two, two day conference. And then uh, after some people stayed on, they hung out, uh, people got connected, exchanged contact information. So be sure to check out the MC, uh, MCAA. And, uh, and, and, and Coach A, if you don't mind, can you just touch on a little bit more about what the MCAA does? And then we're going we're gonna to go straight to your story. But I, I, just, I just don't want to shortchange the MCAA. No doubt. So with that, Minority Coaches Advancement Association, and pretty much says it right there, um, to help those of minority or of color, to help them advance in their profession. So let's say, you know, they get to an interview and they're not prepared or they're not ready. That's mm -hmm. when we come in to help. Because, you know, we always say us of color, uh, us being minorities, we always say, you know, we want to be in position where we're able to get that interview. But once we get that interview and we get to that room, we're not prepared. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. So we're here to help with that and help with the advancement of it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So Co Coach A, can, can, you, can you take us back? Like, when did this journey for you, because I know that you have a, you have a passion and you have a genuine, authentic love for football. When, when did you first realize that, that this was something that you truly loved and, and that this was something that, that was near and dear to you? Take us back, Coach. Take us back. Ooh, where should I start? Let's just say overall, just with family, right? Mm -hmm. So only girl, I have a little brother, he's six years apart from me. He's actually a Penn State right now, a receiver playing football freshman year. Uh, dad played football at Mississippi State, Air Force Academy. I uh, got a cousin right now, Josh Dobbs. He's down at Jacksonville with the Jaguars. Uh, two cousins play baseball at UAB, University of Alabama, Birmingham. Uh, one's with the Kansas City Royals. Uh, so that's Tyler Tolbert. And then my other cousin was Stephen Dobbs. They played together, actually, which was the cool part. 
And then grandpa, he was a collegiate coach. Um, he coached at Mary Holmes College in West Point, Mississippi. He coached women's basketball, men's baseball. I don't have any aunts. I have all uncles. So it kind of, look, you get it right there. It's just, I just kind of been ingrained in it, I guess you could say. Okay. Okay. Well, what, 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 what made you decide to go the football route though? Because everything you listed off and you listed off some that played football, you listed off some that played baseball and then what was football? What, like, what, what, how did you know that football was, was for you per se versus, you know, looking at some of these other sports or taking an interest in some of these other potential sports? I think football one again, goes back to dad and my brother uh, being in the house with those two is football, football, nonstop. And then, of course, you know, just seeing how much love they had for it, putting love in for, you know, with myself. And then I think it kind of goes back also when I was in high school. So graduated in 2015, I believe my junior or senior year, uh, me and Steven Sims Jr., we were actually together in the same class. He's with the uh, Washington, I don't want to say Redskins, but he's uh, with the Washington team for the NFL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so with him, I, you know, watched his recruitment process in high school. And coming out of high school for him, you know, he was pretty much, I guess, underrated in a way. So coming out with hardly any stars, with one offer, and that was the KU, Kansas. And seeing him overcome all of those, you know, I guess, blocks of adversity is beautiful. And especially, like I said, just being a part of his recruitment process and seeing, you know, a kid that's worked and worked and worked and always had a chip on his shoulder. So I think that played a part as well. Mm, okay okay and, and then coach a I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say this j just so we're on the same page but feel free you don't have to make your short story short you can make your you can make your short story long it, 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 it's, it's perfectly okay with me it's perfectly fine um because today is all about you um and, and just spotlighting some, some of the great things that that you're doing some of the great work that you're doing and uh j just just seeing you know on, on, like on your on, on your timeline on, on twitter and a few other places i see you talking about just always focusing on consistency like can, can can you just talk with us a little bit about one how, how did you get to that 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 mindset to, to focus on consistency because that's not the easiest thing to do in this day and age so can you talk a little bit about that uh freshman year of college like we're gonna go back down the timeline <laughs> i went into college partial basketball scholarship um, ended up not having the highest SAT or ACT scores to play in the first game. They notified me two weeks before the first game, right? Mm. So me being a big headed athlete uh, in high school, four years on varsity, freshman, all of that. And just having a big head, I was like, you know, I'm not going to retake them. You know, why should I have to retake them? And you guys notified me two weeks before the first game. So I took, you know, my little hyper dunks. I remember the name of the shoes, took them, threw them in my locker, and I never went back. Um, with that being said, you know, I played basketball all my life, like most football players, you know, you play a sport for so long since you were little, little, little. And when it comes to a time when, you know, you've just, I guess, hang up the cleats or hang up the shoes, it's like, what do I do next? And so again, freshman year, hung them up uh, or threw them, I guess you could say, threw them. <laughs> and then, you know, I got my head in the books. I ended up earning a full ride academic scholarship. And then, you know, here we are. And that was kind of played a part in consistency being consistent in what I'm doing mm. what did that feel like though for, for you to throw them up and knowing that this was something that that you've done since like you said you've competed from from such a young age <laughs> and then and then now you, you you're just throwing it down and you, you're just walking away like talk just just talk us through that because I know now that you know that there's so many athletes that are either walking away from sports or even young professionals just walking away from a career that they thought that that they wanted uh can, can you just talk a little a little bit about like you know that that thought process that you went through and just dealing with that that situation that time of your life i think in the moment right you know you're a hot-headed freshman you probably what was it probably like 18 19 right at that mm. time and you're like no one can tell me nothing i'm gonna do what i want to do that's kind of the state i was in when i actually uh did all of that i never told my mom and dad I didn't tell my mom and dad until I had actually earned an academic scholarship. You know what I mean? So now I got something I can put on the table results uh. and show them like, you know, I'm still working. But I think at that moment, you know, it was kind of like, it was, I'm going to do what Ashton wants to do. Mm. So, and that's, you know, that's how it kind of went down. Mm. Well, okay. So now I, I, I want you to talk just about like see, seeing, seeing Ashton at that stage in her life. And then now as, as, as you're, you know, the, the director of, of, of high school relations, 
like now with, with you being able to see these these student athletes young and and you see maybe some of them going through some of some of the same things you're going through uh like just dealing with and and, and recruiting and and seeing this young talent what do you what do you think of, of this generation because i know there's a lot of stuff that's said about this generation and i don't want to generalize and put them all together but I, I'm just trying to get get an overview because I know you're on, on the ground running with them. I, I know that you know that, that you're working with them and and helping them transition to, to the next level. Like I, I'm I'm curious to hear from, hear from you, Coach A. Just just what what do you think about uh, about this generation and how they how they're operating? I think it's a little bit different. Like I'm not that far off. You know what I mean? I'm still <laughs> I'm still in tune. I'm still cool. I'm still yeah, hip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, look, I'll be hip for what the next five years, and that's when they say you're lame or you old. <laughs> Um, but I think it's different because it's social media. I think, you know, me I, with us or with my generation, it was like social media was here, but it didn't play a factor into, you know, recruiting or recruiting process. And that's mm -hmm. women's basketball, even with football, it wasn't as big as how it is now. It's totally different. Like with my brother, uh, like I said, he just graduated high school class of 2020, the quarantine babies. But um, with him, it was just like social media, social media, social media. And I'm like, you know, it's different because everybody wants to post every little thing. Everybody, you know, all these kids want to post their offers, even if they're not real offers. They just want to post it out there just to get some clout, some hype. It's a whole different ball game. And like I said, with me being close or with me being somewhat in tune with everything, it's kind of easy to see through all of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I was actually talking with a, with a trainer today, um, and, and, and we were just talking about how uh, how back when, around the time when I was in high school, because I, 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 I graduated in 2006, and around the time I was in high school, how it was frowned upon for someone to commit to a school, and then when it comes time, or when it's almost time for them like to sign, because they'll give the verbal commitments like, hey, I'm going to blank school, and then when it comes time for them to actually sign, if they switched up without like something happened without a coaching change or anything like that, then that would be frowned upon. But yep. in this day, in this day and age, would you say that's, would you say that's the case or? Now it's like, whether it's a coaching change or not, I'm committed to you verbally. And then a month later, two months later into the game, it's like, I'm decommitting from this school and I'm committing to this school. It, I, to me, the, my personal opinion, this has nothing to do with Illinois. I'm just like, I don't get it. Mm. I, I don't get it because I feel like a commitment to be like an old school relationship, right? You're getting engaged. And when you sign that paper, you officially married. So you mm -hmm. should take that seriously. And then look, I'm gonna bring Illinois into it. So like, you know, with me saying this, you know, when you get an offer from Illinois, that offer should mean something to you. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be another offer to add onto a 24 seven sports list and say, I got 30 plus offers. Cause you can mm -hmm. only go to one school. And out of those 30 offers the, uh, I'd say probably three to four are really actual, a real actual committable offers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you use, you posting a big thing saying I got 30 plus offers. Da, 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 that, that means nothing to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause that, that like, like that's one thing I've, I've I've seen just being in just the the student ath athlete development space is, is seeing that that's a big thing for the students to post. Oh, I got this offer, I got that offer, and they're posting these pictures of players that played there like a year ago, two years ago. And I'm like, wait a minute, when did this really? Why is this such such a big thing? It's come to a game where it's like it's all about accumulation. So, um, you know, I I was telling my brother, you know, during his process, I'm like, you can't look at social media. So we got that out of his head. We got that out or way before he even got an, you know, any offers. Can't look at it because when you start looking at it, you get discouraged, right? Because uh, you're looking at, okay, well, he got this, but I'm better than him. So how can he get this? You can't look at it that way. So definitely. I mean, yeah, I like to call it scoreboard watching because when when you're looking at 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 this guy, looking at this young lady, and and then you're comparing stats and you're comparing all the you know, all, all, everything that typically we would think that offers are potentially given or presented off of. But then even outside of that, I mean, there's so many other intangibles like leadership and character and other stuff that won't be seen by way of Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. So yeah, you, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm with you on that big time, big time, Coach A. Because, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's a slippery slope with social media. It's, 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 it's so slippery. It's a highlight reel. 
Mm. It's a highlight reel. That's that's what it is. Social media is a highlight reel. And it's kind of just conflicted with just offer, 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 offer. Mm. You, you, like I said, I'm gonna keep saying it. When you get a committal offer, that offer should mean a lot to you where you can call that coach and be like, Hey coach, I'm ready to commit. Right. You shouldn't be happy of an offer. You get an offer and you can't even call that coach or he doesn't pick up any of your calls. That's a red flag. And I'm gonna look, I'm gonna leave it at that. Look, I'm gonna drop the mic. I'm gonna oh, drop the mic on it. Boom. Boom. Oh man. Boom. Wow. Wow. Well, well, Coach A, I'm I'm curious to hear from you, and and I and I don't want you to go go too deep like in the specific practices. Cause I'm not trying to step on step on y'all's feet uh, o- yeah. over there at at, at at University of Illinois or anything like that. But but what particular things are you proud of that that you want to highlight that y'all have done really well, uh, j- just like this past year and, and just Ooh. like with, with, with the program. Oh, uh, you know, I like to say we got the most diverse, or we have the most diverse staff and coaches in college football that's a beautiful thing especially in a time that we're in right now that is so beautiful it's a melting pot um i think number two look uh 14 best public school in the nation right Mm. so when you graduate from the university of illinois you're walking away with a job that's paying 65,000 and up starting Mm. at 65,000. so that's saying you know like if you have the god-given ability to go to the league and when you leave the league, you still have a job. That says a lot. Like, look, again, that's, that's a lot right there. That's what, that's what you ultimately want. You want to be set and then have more income from the NFL stacked away on top of already what you're walking into. Um, I think number three will be our head coach. Why wouldn't you want to play for Coach Smith? That's my question. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> that, look, that's late. I'm going to leave it just like that. Why wouldn't you? So hashtag two I L L twenty one baby. <laughs> I th- you know what? I think I'm a great hype. Look, I want to say hype man, but I'm a great hype woman. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, but that's the funny thing about hype because it's it, it's it's easy to be hype when when there's you know the facts behind it and the information behind it and the stats behind. Because to be able to say the fourteenth university in the nation that says a lot yeah. that says yeah, a lot put, and, and especially put the facts with it yeah yeah i mean you gotta gotta put the facts with it gotta put because you know now it's just you know where, where people canceling people and 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 canceling culture and everything else so you need need to have the facts wikipedia that you know <laughs> no listen so you want to know something i found out let me tell you you ready mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. i recently found out that the creators of youtube graduated from illinois i had no clue no so we were doing um you know going through and making a powerpoint for you know a recruit that's interested in being an entrepreneur and you know we have entrepreneur programs and so when we're making this slide and going through and i'm like youtube the founders were here wow that blew me away you know what i mean i'm like okay and it's it's even more uh i saw you know more logos that you would recognize Tesla, BET, um, NFL, and the list goes on. It's unbelievable. Wow, wow. YouTube, really? Illinois alum. Wow, fighting the line eye. Yeah. Man. Oh, there, and look, last but not least, I, I can keep going on and on. But, you know, Illinois, well, I'll start, I'll start with this. So the Big Ten has one of the top alumni associations or alumni groups across the world or across the globe. Mm. But most of them, you know, the top one is the University of Illinois. You know, there's Illinois alum everywhere. And that makes it easier for you to get jobs and things like that, right? So, look, I, again, it's a lot to offer. Wow, wow. So, you, you, so you, you talking about that is j- just, just really dra- – well, so I have, I have two questions. So I'm, I'm going to go okay. here first because you were talking about just in, in regards to, you know, ma- making a PowerPoint for, for a recruit for, for any – any college potential college athlete you know a high school student whoever might might be listening right now and they're trying to think of what can i do right now to make me more marketable what what would you say to that person right now uh one clean up your social media so that includes the retweets that includes the likes that includes what you like on instagram too because even though you think people can't see it they can see it um so i think that that's the main piece of it all just having a clean concise you know, piece or social media piece that showcases your best highlight reel. 
And I'm going to keep saying highlight reel because that's what it is. No one's going to post failures. Mm. Let's be honest. We take a lot of L's in the dark, right? (laughs) But they always lead up to good things. But if you're confident, you can post the L's. But, you know, most of the time, people are not posting L's. So I'll clean social media, too. Um, Never post a million different college coaches in one post. I saw a post and I was tagged with like coaches from OU, coaches from TCU. Like it had nothing to do with the University of Illinois. Mm. And right right off of the bat, I'm like, I don't even want to look at whatever you just tagged me in, you know? So I think that's number two. Number three would be if you are posting something, don't look at the views, you know? Um, your views could say, let's give a random number. 125 views Mm -hmm. in those 125 views you don't know who's watching you so do not be discouraged Mm. man i'm preaching today i i I, I, like i'm preaching i think i was a pastor in my past life i'm (laughs) preaching today oh goodness that's that's too funny that's too funny so (laughs) <laughs> oh man so you you just said pastor and my my, que- my next question was going to go to relationships so i was about to say okay. uh so i was about to say uh oh, oh so I, I guess we're going we're going to talk about the congregation right here um okay but uh yeah so with so like like, like me and you talked before coach a and just talking about the the mcaa and with i i don't know why i'm, I'm making this geared more so towards recruits but i really want to speak in, in in general but but in, in terms of, of, of relationships and in terms of college athletics and where, where do you feel that, that how heavy do you think or how important, how much emphasis, there we go, how much emphasis should someone put on getting their relationships up if they want to advance in college athletics? Uh, the most important piece is you got to understand where you fall as an athlete what kind of caliber of an athlete you are. Because everybody wants to go division one, but not everyone is a division one player. Not everyone can play at the University of Illinois. Not everybody can play in the Big Ten. So you got to first be honest with yourself. And if you don't understand where you fall into play, you should, you know, ask your head coach. And if you don't like what your head coach says, you say, yes, sir. You walk off and you work and work and work and see if you can prove him wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. That's all you can do. Mm. And I think, you know, some parents are honest to their children and some parents are not. And some parents push and push and push and they attack you. I don't want to say attack, but they chase down college coaches. You can't chase down a college coach. You just can't because a college coach already knows what they're looking for and what they need to bring on the field. Because the ultimate goal in a college program, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA is to win championships, to win ball games. You want to win. And so you just got to understand what kind of player you are. You got to take it in and just be honest. This is a business. That's, that's ultimately what it is. It's a business that you love to do. And you got to take it that way to take it seriously. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's so that, that I think that's one of the things that, that, that people lose sight of sometimes. Um, and I know I, I was that type of athlete myself. Um, but I know people like just in regards to emotions or, or, or the feelings, put, putting the feelings into the, into the business of it. And those two things definitely do not mix uh, because that's how you quickly lose. Uh, but, but, but ultimately j- just with people um, wanting to move forward and ultimately with people being inspired, who, who would you say, and I know this could be a long list, but who would you say is out there that, you feel you want to give flowers to that may have not may have not received their just due yet. And you want to be like, I appreciate this person because without this person or these people, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm, the list is very long. But look, the, and I don't want to say any names because I don't want to make anybody mad. That's fair. But let's, let's just say, you know what they always say, the old African proverb, it takes a village to raise one. So it's taken a village to raise me and to get me to where I am today. So that village, I love you guys. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I, I understand that too because you know somebody would listen it. Somebody would listen it. Be like, yeah. Okay, why did, <laughs> you said everybody else but me? You said this person and you didn't say me. I can't believe you. It's like we just keep it. It's a village. It takes a village. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, where, so long term, where where do you see yourself, Coach? Ooh. Like, where, like 
not, 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 I'm not asking you to say a specific entity or a specific okay. university or okay. a specific uh, league or anything like that. But I'm just curious, like da- down the road, like what, what, what's a big goal for you? A big goal for me? Hmm. You finna be mad. And I know a lot of people out there are the listening are going to be mad too, because I have not thought past the Illinois football since May 19th when I got hired. I have not thought past it. I go to sleep at night and they just hope this doesn't sound cliche, but I go to sleep at night with Illinois football on my mind, recruiting on my mind 24 seven. So I know for, I guess for now, we just going to be at Illinois for a very long time. <laughs> so that's all I can say on that. I ain't thought past it. Good, good, good. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not mad because I'm the type of person that can understand people who are just focusing, maximizing and focusing uh, just on, you know, just being good stewards of where they are. But I also understand people who, you know, think into the future and all that other jazz. So e- either way, Coach A, we're good. We're good on look, this side. I will, look, I will say this, okay. I always knew that I wanted to be in college football, right? Mm-hmm. So now I'm living out that dream. Mm-hmm. So all I can say is I'm waking up and I'm doing what I love in the profession that I want to be in. And so all I can say is thank you to Coach Lovey Smith and thank you to everyone that has, you know, helped me get to this place. Again, it goes back to that village. That's like, that's where all I can say is I'm living a dream right now. I'm loving it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, I think that's what it's all about. I mean, especially when we when we identify where we want to be or where we desire to be and then to get the opportunity to walk in it and just be in it every day. I mean, I think, I mean, I think that's how, that's how you should feel. So I think that's great. I think that's great. I think that's excellent. Thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now, now I got a slight, I got a slight curveball for you, coach. I got a slight Ooh, curveball. Okay. Slight. Come, on. <laughs> come on. Look, I'm ready. Come on. When you're done with the game, okay. what do you want to be said about coach A? She pushed me every day to be a champion. She constantly reminded me of a champion's mindset and how to be consistent always. And that's it. Define a champion's mindset. Champion's mindset, it ties into with consistent always. Those mornings when you don't wanna wake up at 4 a.m. to go work out, but you do, and you go inside and you kill it anyway, and then you get to where you wanna go, whether that's the NFL and so on, that's the champion's mindset. When there's so many, you know, I say disadvantages, um, what's another word for it? Um, adversity, tying into it, different steps that you got to take. And it seems like you keep going 10 steps back every time you take two steps and you keep going. That's a champion's mindset. So Co- Coach A, I'm, I'm the type of person that, like, that likes tangible application, right? Okay. Like I need, I need to see something. I need to see the steps. I need to watch the video and then I can go and do it. For somebody out there who says they want a champion's mindset or they heard you say, talking about a champion's mindset, but they say, I don't know how to get there. And I'm currently at home and I'm laying in the bed or I'm doing whatever. Like, how do you, how do you apply this into your day-to-day life? Well, the first things first, if you land in bed, you got to sit up, you got to get up, right? You got to take it one step at a time. And I preach this all the time. Everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. Let's just face the fact, right? I can give you, or I can sit here and give you step by step by step of what to do or what I did or how this will help you or how this will benefit you in the long run. But it's up to you to get up out of bed, sit up and stand up and make it happen, right? You can pray all day long, but you got to put some work behind that prayer. You got to put some work and some effort behind it. So I think that's the main thing. Take that first step, sit up, and then take that second step, stand up, and then take that third, start walking, make it happen. Look, now you got me preaching, coaching, everything all in one. And then you start walking, then you start running, then you start doing like them young yes. men on, on, on your Take Twitter feed. Take it step feed. by step. I seen yes. them young men pushing that sled. I said, oh my hey, goodness. I salute to them because Coach Lou got them working, right? You know, I'm going to say salute because I can't do it. But <laughs> if, if somebody challenged me, if one of the guys was like, Coach A, I know you can do it. No, if they challenge me and say, I know you can't do this, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it. But I'll be hurt after, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh my goodness! Because I, I, how, how heavy are those? Do you know? 
No, I haven't even seen it in person. It it, it looks crazy. I'm going to say that it looks crazy, but I bet it's worth it. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I I, I would give about anything. No, I wouldn't. But, I mean, it would be nice. (laughs) It it would would be nice just to be, because I know them young boys is cut up. Uh, Like, I mean, it would be not, but I know that I don't have the discipline right now to to put in them hours that they put that in in the way mindset. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Go hit me with <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, Coach A. Wow. Wow. You, look, wow. you gotta have the champion's mindset first within yourself in order to go into a locker room with others, your other teammates, your coaches. And once you get that champion's mindset, you're able to evaporate that off into everybody else. Or per I guess do precipitation to everybody else, whichever way you want to say it. Fair, fair, fair enough. I mean, but you know, I was, I was that age once and you know, I was in there lifting, I was in there running, I was working out doing all that, but now I'm flexing my intellectual muscles and you know, I'm taking time. I'm, I'm learning, I'm reading, I'm writing. So, you know, Hey, but I am starting to work back out. I'm, I'm taking the champion's mindset and I got up, I put my shoes on, yep. then I started walking, <laughs> then I started jogging a mile, then I jogged two miles, and then I almost died after I took a break for a week. <laughs> it's neither here nor there. That, at, least you're on, at least you're honest. Honesty hey, is key. I mean, I have to be. That's, that's, the, that's, the, only, that's the only way. Speaking of, speaking of honesty being key, because that's one of my core principles, Coach A, what, what would you say is a core, and we're about to, we're about to get into the two minute drill after this, okay. but I just wanted to ask, I just wanted to ask this one. What, what would you say is like a core principle or some core principles that you live by day to day? One, um, I think I said this before, effort, mm. two, passion, and three, I'm going to have to say my granny. And that, that's a principle I live by because granny, her, her preachings are in my head. And then she's still here with me, so I can call her anytime I need her. Mm-hmm. So those gonna be those are three I live by: effort, passion, and granny is key. Oh man, granny, come through, granny! Oh man. yeah, granny, come with it. She come with all of it. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. Oh man, I, I now now you say it. I'm thinking about my grandma. One thing she would always one thing she would always preach. She would always preach. Y'all got to love one another. Y'all got to love one another. That's what my granny will always say. Always, always, always. Huh. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Coach, Coach A, now, now we're about to go ahead and we're about to transition to this other segment uh, that I like to call the, the two-minute drill. Okay. And the two-minute drill, you, you know, you're, not, you, you're familiar with the two-minute drill. You know, you're, you're, you're not new does it, Wait, does it involve me running? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's not going to involve no running. <laughs> It's not gonna involve okay. no bear crawls. It's not gonna involve uh, no pushing rolls, no sleds. No nothing. Uh, nah, okay. none of that. None of the chopping your Coach, feet. Look, Coach Lou not hiding nowhere on this camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, man, that, just that's so funny. Making sure. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Lou, come on, come on, come on, Coach Lou, come over here. <laughs> oh my goodness, but so. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're good. Okay. Bring so, back. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. So the two minute drill is where I'm gonna ask okay. you a couple of rapid fire questions, and then you just, you know, we have a little fun. Ask a couple of rapid fire questions. You answer. Then we're then we're done. That's it. That's All a wrap. Right. Let's look. Let's get it. All right. Here we go. Favorite food. Chicken tenders. From where? <laughs> Anywhere except Chili's. I don't like Chili's chicken tenders. Interesting. Okay. Uh, your the la- last book that you read. Uh, that will never work. It's about the founding of Netflix by Mark Thompson. Wow. Okay. Your your, your go to podcast. Uh, well, I got a new one now. Michelle Obama just dropped a new one coming soon. Mmm. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. She gonna shut down Spotify. Spotify oh, doing something. Most definitely. She gonna make me buy a Spotify account. Cause right yeah. now it's free. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, what, what's your what's your favorite go flip go to Netflix show of preference? Uh, it was Madam C J Walker, but I binge watched mm-hmm. it in a day. Mm-hmm. I love that one. LeBron did his thing with that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. And last one one tip that you would want to leave with a student athlete. Mm. Don't be discouraged during the hard times. Keep working, keep working, keep working. Don't look for praise. Keep working. Because at the end of the day, nobody cares. Work harder. 
that's the crazy thing too. Nobody cares. Like, oh my goodness. That's we, so I good. think, look, it goes back to social media. I think we want so much praise and attention and likes and the retweets that we get caught up in having so much praise during this highlight reel. And when things go left, we don't know what to do because no one's praising us. Mm. Don't look for the don't look for the praise. You got to praise yourself, right? You got to push yourself because at the end of the day, you gonna be the only one in the room with you. When things, mm. you know, like I said, go left. What will you do? Mm. That's good. That's good. Last, last last question. Last question. This this isn't this is the two minute drill is over. You did it. I think I think I'm a little mad because what? you laughed at my favorite food, but I'm gonna let that slide. So what? look, go ahead and go ahead and throw the next question. No, no, no. <laughs> I said chicken tenders. You said what? <laughs> and oh, no, it, no. So look, if anybody out there is listening, I like chicken tenders with fries, and I like honey mustard and ranch. Ranch for the fries, honey mustard for the chicken. Oh wow, that's how I get down with my chicken sandwich. I always got to get the spicy deluxe from Chick Fil A. <laughs> Chick Fil A need to go ahead and send me a little sponsorship. But every time I get the spicy deluxe, I get the ranch and I get the Chick Fil A sauce. And the ranch is for the fries. The yep. Chick Fil A sauce is for the sandwich. And that's just how it goes down. You already know. Sweet tea. And I'm and look good. at unless you my brother, and this man gets like seven different sauces and dips his sandwich in each sauce. I've never seen nobody do that nasty stuff in my life until I saw him do it. That's why he that's why he made his way to Penn State, eating all that sauce. He got all juiced up now. He juiced <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, um, but uh oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was gonna I was gonna ask you this. Who would okay. who would you like to see next? Who would you like to see next for me to interview on Beyond the Ball? Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Does it have to be wait, does it have to be somebody in sports? Or can it be somebody in sports? I said, who would you like to see next? It can be somebody anywhere. This is your recommendation. Assistant women's basketball coach, Jasmine Player. She's actually a, a board member with me on NCAA. And where she's at, she's at, she's at University of Illinois? No, she's at KU, Kansas. Oh, yeah, set that up. Women's that basketball, up. assistant yes, coach. Set, set that up. I would, see, and that's one thing I would love to do more of is interview um, some more women who are in sports, out of sports, whatever. Uh, because I just know that there are some amazing women doing some amazing things, but I just haven't been able to get to them the best. So she's a look. She's a goat. She's a silent. I like to think she you know say she's a silent killer. She's okay. quiet with it, but when she's like ready, she's ready. Okay, well, uh, Coach A, you can if you set that up, uh, just you know send a tweet, mention me or whatever. I got then, you. Yeah, we'll make that happen. But where where can everybody find you? How can everybody follow? Uh, you coach A and, and what you're doing as they follow your journey, just share that information with the people. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, A-S-H, the number three, Washington, like the state. So Ash3 Washington on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, email if you want to email me anything, aw19 at illinois.edu. And then if you guys want to become a member of MCAA, go to mcaa20.com. Oh wow, that was, that was nice. You snuck it in there really nice. MCAA got they got two shameless <laughs> plugs in this episode. Look, easy. <laughs> and this ep episode today was sponsored by MCAA. Um, <laughs> but uh, well, wow. so uh, Coach A, thank you for taking the time to to hop on with us to to, to chop it up to to have a little bit of fun with us and and share your story, share share some background in in all the gems that you dropped all over the place. We definitely do appreciate. Uh, you taking the time to hang out with us. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed myself and you go get you some chicken tenders, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get some chicken tenders on you. You got it. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna get all the sauces. And, uh, and, and everybody out there listening, we're getting out here, but make sure that you subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and be sure to leave a helpful rate and review. And until next time, the ball is out there. My name is Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond.